A very good day to you all. Thank you for inviting me to the CIO 200 Roadshow. Steve Jobs was very fond of recounting this anecdote. Sometime back, a study was done, maybe 30 years ago, to measure the efficiency of locomotion of various species, as well as various means of transport. The condor, a kind of vulture, topped the list. And man was very way below in the list. This was not too impressive for the, you know, the crown of evolutionary process, the man. So Scientific American, conducted a study and decided to test the same efficiency by putting this man on a bicycle. And guess what? The man on the bicycle beat everyone else, including the condor. This bicycle is what we define as technology, that which enhances the capacity of humans to surpass all living creatures. If you look at the human being, the species that is on the top of the evolutionary pyramid, he or she is less than most of the animals that we see around. Neither can he run as fast as the leopard, nor can he fly like an eagle. Neither uh, is he uh, as resilient as some of the animals. And yet, he is endowed with a particular faculty the mind, using which he can make tools or various technology which make him stronger than an elephant when he makes his earth moving equipment or when he makes planes that can make him fly like a bird. And ever since the very beginning, this human mind has always been on the lookout for technology or tools that could make his life easier. A flint stone was invented to ease hunting when man was a hunter gatherer. A plow was invented when he became a farmer. Steam engine unleashed the industrial revolution. And then there were these phases of industrial revolution where we started with mechanization, with the, the steam engine, locomotive and power loom. We moved through that to the electricity-based mass production, the industrial revolution of the 19th and 20th century. That led us to the computer and internet-based knowledge systems. And finally, today we are on the verge of what is the fourth industrial revolution, which combines all the three worlds, the physical, the biological, and the digital. Today, we are talking about artificial intelligence, where man and machine you know, blend seamlessly. We are talking about human genomes, human cloning, GM of crops, and so on. At this stage, it is important to just pause and ask ourselves, where is this technology headed? What is the purpose of technology? The technology which began as a tool to make life more comfortable, to give man a little more leisure and time, is today a tool for fulfilling all the desires. And where is this taking us, be it the pollution problem in the world, the wiping of biodiversity, climate change? All of this is because nature is being harnessed, so to say, or misused to feed human greed. Technology has always been something which, the ma which man uses his mind to have a better control over matter and that it in turn, that material comfort or that material ease 
allows him to evolve. And for instance, when man invented the flint stone, it was a material physical tool. So gradually, when it came to the radio or microwaves or uh, coal or steel, we see that there is a gradual evolution of using more and more subtle forms of matter to today, you know, the laser and the, the nanotechnology. So as man moves more and more to, towards subtler forms, a question arises in us that where is all this headed? What is the purpose of technology? Is technology for technology's sake? Or is there a larger purpose of evolution of which this technology should be a part? And therefore, I would like to propose whether we could look at technology in a different way. Can technology be perceived as the a shift from the mastery of external environment, which it has done beautifully so far, to a tool that can help him master the inner environment? Can technology be shifted to an inner technology, an inner re-engineering, so that we look at it in a different way because we have seen that there is no end to using technology to make life easier or more comfortable. Unfortunately, the machines are getting smarter, but as individuals, we are almost there or we are regressing from being a civilization which was sustainable or having a philosophy of life which was simple living and high thinking, technology, instead of giving us more leisure and therefore more time to pursue things which are higher, is help making us get into that rut of consumerism and of more and more thereby making and rendering the earth less and less livable. It is said that if American consumerism continues the way it is, we would need many more earths. And that American consumerism is now which is seen the world over. So India can look at a, a different technology, an inner technology, where, for instance, the Buddha says that instead of fulfilling a thousand desires, it is more important to conquer one desire. The Isha Upanishad says, Tena Tyaktena Bhunjitha, that by renouncing all, enjoy all. Because there is a way of living which is more sustainable and that is what India can contribute to the world. The very th Steve Jobs, when he used to give this story of the bicycle, he used to say that the computer that he had invented was a bicycle for the mind. Just as a physical bicycle allows the human being to glide you know, uh, smoothly and as efficiently as the condor. Similarly, the computer is a bicycle of the mind. So is it possible that we look for a bicycle for our consciousness so that we can glide through these inner worlds and inner skies frictionless just as a bicycle helps us overcome the friction of earth and the bicycle of the mind, the computer, help us to overcome the friction of logical thinking and so on, the bicycle of consciousness can actually make our lives glide smoothly in the inner skies because it would 
relieve us of all the frictions of greed of consumerism of all kinds of problems that the modern world has been endowed with it's a very interesting uh, tool these days which most people use of the ikigai where the purpose of life they say is not is neither seeking happiness nor seeking fame or money but it is a confluence of what i love what i am good at what i can be paid for and what the world needs now mapping it to the indian systems i would say that what i love what i am good at and what i can be paid for is what is called swadharma something that i am born to be and what the world needs is yoga dharma the zeitgeist the spirit of the times now the indian knowledge system say that the swadharma and yoga dharma alone is not enough because today if this if my swadharma is coding and the yoga dharma is digital technology unless i have the third element which is the sanatan dharma or the eternal religion or eternal way of being the very purpose of the world which is evolution if it is not there then with my coding skills in a digital world today i can even make something like blue whale which caused the suicide of many school kids so we need a higher purpose towards which technology is heading and that is the eternal purpose of evolution human evolution and if that is the purpose if human evolution is the purpose why this world is made then technology cannot be an end in itself and it has to align towards that final aim we know of this in very uh, famous taxonomy uh, called bloom's taxonomy which talks about the mental uh, learning processes or how human mind has evolved through the ages Uh, and how a human uh, mind learns so it starts with the process of remember then we go on to understand apply finally to analyze evaluate and create so the lower three are called convergent thinking because they lead to one right answer and it is not the basis for innovation whereas analyze evaluate and create is what we call higher order thinking which is divergent thinking where there is no one right answer and if i map it with the indian knowledge systems again remember and understand it is what we call chitta or memory passive and active memory apply and analyze is the manas the sense mind that takes in the data and makes it intelligible to the human consciousness and evaluate and create is what we call buddhi so technology is slowly moving from information to finally knowledge and it has to move beyond knowledge now to wisdom because of technology there has been a democratization of information information is available to all so what it does to human consciousness is that having content is no more something that is a differentiator because everybody has access to that but how do i work with that content in the oral traditional times in the let us say the vedic period when every, there was no written um, technology there was no printing press memory played a very important role in human evolution so chitta was important remembering and understanding now through the industrial revolution and the knowledge revolution we have reached where we have learned to apply and analyze and artificial intelligence is pushing us towards evaluation you have the deep blue the supercomputer which can play and defeat kasparov so buddhi is where today we have to develop ourselves and there is something beyond the buddhi the intuition so when artificial intelligence is making way into our lives 
it should not scare us that we are going to lose jobs it is a nudge for us to evolve and evolve the human faculties artificial intelligence can take away many robotic jobs uh, which are uh, to do with remember and understand but if human beings evolve in two ways one is going above the critical mind into wisdom and intuition and going deeper within the heart into that source of compassion and oneness for all then these are the jobs that no machine can take away from us and technology has to move towards this way towards this direction which makes humans evolve into more humans today the industrial revolution for instance had made humans into machines i sit here and keep pressing a button all day long it is pretty uh, dehumanizing so we should be glad that machines came in they took away all these jobs gave us more time but let this time not be used into wasteful activities but technology can be used to mirror and improve human consciousness and the time has come when we should move into inner technologies and there is where india has a lot to offer to the world india has been the the epitome of studies of consciousness tomorrow is the technology of tomorrow is the technology of consciousness of human evolution of mastering of inner worlds and there are enough tools that india already had the tools of meditation of vipassana of raj yoga of conquering one's desires and unfortunately india lost these because of long standing invasion of the mughals first and then the british for over 800 to 1000 years we have been colonized and therefore with our decolonized minds we are continue to look at technology how the west looks at technology the west looks at technology as something to make life outer life comfortable and we should be thankful for the west for that that has been their contribution to make the world a better place but the east and especially india have has had a tradition of inner consciousness of inner technology of how to live peacefully with the world, in with with everybody how to have uh, um, a technology that is that talks about oneness with all sustainability has been a part of the culture here so we should look at sharing developing sharing this inner technology with the rest of the world so that the best of the west the outer you know mastery can blend with the best of the east which is inner mastery and so that we can move into a world which is which is sustainable which is peaceful where human being is not a creature of greeds and wants and with living a life of consumerism but a higher being that is peaceful that is um, engaged in higher pursuits in elevating of human consciousness and making the world a better place thank you